This video was brought to you by Bedroom Planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, and Stormberg. Yo, what's up? Today I'm going to show you the charging of the LFP battery in the Made in China Model 3 Standard Range Plus. So, you know, a little background here. Um, you guys know that uh, we have this China car, or I just call it China car, but it's a Standard Range Plus Tesla Model 3 is from China, and over there Tesla chose to use LFP battery, whereas the Fremont car, they used uh, the NCA battery, nickel, nickel, cadmium, aluminium or something. Slightly different chemistry and also different form factor because uh, the LFP battery in uh, from uh, China, they use uh, different, oh, I don't remember if it was a prismatic cell or the, the pouch cell. I think it was pouch cell, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, the, the, um, the LFP battery actually takes a little bit more space and it's heavier and people are a little bit skeptic to how it can perform and especially this winter we heard lots of shit going on that uh, it was po quite poorly performing because of cold weather but however remember that already in February Tesla pushed out Tesla yeah, no, so Tesla pushed out uh, a fix. They just they can tweak stuff because uh, you know Tesla has a pretty advanced um, uh, thermal management system, so they can just read the word some of the leftover heat from the motor uh, to heat up the battery. So by doing that, and just small software tweaks, they were able to raise the temperature in the battery pack so that in winter you're not supposed to have these problems anymore. Unfortunately, I'm not able to test it because it's summer now, but um, yeah, I. From what I heard, you guys can Google about this. Next move, they did some tests in February and it showed better charging speed and also better performance and not that limp mode of whatever you're supposed to get in the early days of the LFP. That is the main disadvantage of the LFP. Along with that, it's like I mentioned, it's um, it takes up more space, it's heavier. It has a lower energy density than the NCA battery. And then in this video, I'm going to show you how fast it can charge. So before I start, I can also mention that the LFP has some other uh, interesting properties which is that um, it can be charged to 100% without taking too much damage it's very resistant to staying at high state of charge whereas other lithium batteries if you charge it 100% uh, it doesn't like it uh, and then it will actually degrade the battery faster if you charge to 100% and then especially if you stay at 100% and if also the battery is uh, at higher temperature at 100% so it's like a product of all these uh, uh, conditions. And then um, another uh, 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 property with the LFP is that the voltage span is quite small. Uh, so uh, usually when you have regular lithium batteries when you charge a car to 100% you have 400 volts and then in the low end you have as low as 330 volts you have about 70 volt span between high and low whereas the LFP battery has only around 20-30 volt difference um, and that's actually why it's not very common to use it in EVs because with the lower voltage span it's then harder to determine the state of charge because when you look at the percentage in the car or at your phone you know how does the device figure out how many percent you have well it looks at voltage and then it tries to figure out how high or low the battery is so um and what else is it with the lfp yeah, lfp also has lots of cycles i mean it's it's quite a robust uh, chemistry so you can have more cycles as much as twice as many cycles which means more a higher lifetime than the the other types and the last thing is the lfp batteries has in general low internal resistance so that means that you have less heat generation and you can in general also push it at higher speeds than the other ones so based on this LFP versus NCA, China versus America. Well, okay, that sounds politically wrong, but okay, anyway. So um, let me then um, start the tape now. So you see now we include actually the, the made in China car and the, the American car and also the, the classic American car. And you see that right off the line here, both, all of them charge to about 160 kilowatts. 
uh, pretty fast speed and uh, the middle one though uh, charges a little bit slower because uh, it seems like Tesla is waiting a little bit until they ha they are more certain about or more confident about how fast that battery can charge but you've seen in the past that the, the middle one the, the American battery charges a little bit slower uh, but you see that actually on the right there that one charges incredibly fast so that's the classic one with the classic uh, chemistry the NCA it charges really fast so we have maybe a potential for the middle battery to also charge faster eventually but this is just something that we have to wait and see I guess Tesla just gathering enough data so they can unleash the power uh, even in the middle battery but you see that um, the China battery is charging also pretty fast but right now it's just more neck and neck but uh, it's still you see the classic battery to the right is charging slightly faster than the other ones it's impressive how fast it charges uh, the middle one now it starts to throttle a little bit you see already at 30 percent it's starting to throttle quite significantly compared to the China car the China battery is still hovering at 120 uh, kilowatt uh, and then as for the, the to the right uh, it's also starting to troll but you see that overall uh, the, throughout the whole span now the classic battery or the right battery is charging faster than the other one so that is really impressive but look what's see how in the middle there you see that we start throttling even more and more so uh, the classic battery oh, I mean sorry sorry not classic the middle battery is now down to only 88 kilowatt whereas um, the China battery is now at 100 and still hovering at 100 kilowatt uh, even at 50 percent and you see now this, we start to uh, change a little bit here because the to the right it used to be I mean it was fast in the beginning but you see that um, the China battery is actually catching up so at 50 percent the China battery is charging faster than uh, the, all the other batteries and it's starting to get, build a pretty massive lead here. And remember that uh, we are talking about around 60 kilowatt hour. You can see it on the bottom. Uh, you have normal full pack and, and all the way to the left uh, left corner, le bottom left corner, 55 kilowatt hour. And then you add a little uh, buffer, uh, zero, I mean, um, braking protection. And these batteries are around 60 kilowatt hour. So think about this, that at 60%, you're charging at over one C in the China battery. And in the in the, the other batteries, you're still charging at, yeah, around about one C. So, so this is really impressive performance that you get uh, these kind of speeds in such a small battery but you see also now that um in the middle again the classic battery uh, seems like they haven't unleashed the power uh, and also that recording by the way is a little bit old so maybe I should try to update it some people claim that uh, the, the middle one uh, that one they have that version and that it charges faster than when I recorded it so yeah just uh, rem keep this in mind that um, that it could be slightly outdated the, the middle one uh, but uh, still okay uh, to the right now you see that at 75% we are down to 45 kilowatt in the classic one but the the China battery is charging at 50 kilowatt you see I remember what I said that um, the LFP seems to be able to withstand more power and it has lower internal resistance and it can take a little bit more beating even at the high end so let's see now which car is gonna finish to 90% uh, first well uh, we'll see right now it's actually pretty neck and neck with the China battery and the classic battery to the right yeah, the, but whereas the middle one is starting to slow down you can see that now we the, the middle one is significantly slower than the two other ones so um, uh, again uh, the I don't see what the difference is is in, in the middle and the right one so they should be very similar batteries so which means that Tesla just haven't unleashed the power so uh, just don't uh, don't just uh, conclude that uh, this is it uh, the middle is shit no uh, it's just that uh, Tesla is still gathering data about it um, Okay, but oh, why? Oh, why? We are getting close to 90%. What the heck is going on now? Um, the classic one to the right is starting to slow down quite significantly, whereas the China battery is still charging like a boss. It's taking 36 kilowatt at 89%. Remember, we are talking about more than 0.5C here. It's talking about 60 kilowatt hour battery. The China battery wins there, passing the 90% line with still over 30 kilowatt, whereas the other ones are down to 25 and whatever. So, you know what? I just charge a little bit extra to see what's happening. So you can see now, nice and flat charging curve for the LFP battery versus the other one. So there, the standard range plus, uh, the classic one also reached 90%, and then it will take a while before the, <laughs> the middle one reaches 90%. But remember again that, um, uh, the middle and the right battery should be similar so it's just uh, a formality almost that Tesla just need to um, unlock the power and then it should be able to charge as fast as the other ones but just to show you now that uh, the LFP battery is not uh, is no joke or no yoke it, it is charging like a boss so even at 97% it's taking 20 kilowatt it's almost like uh, a German electro auto yeah wow very impressive so uh, which car is gonna finish first by the way <laughs> the standard range plus at 90% uh, and the classic one I mean in the middle one or the the China battery at 100% well it's pretty neck on neck but you can see now this just to put things into perspective there 
there it reached 90 percent and then we are 99 percent almost as good as 100 percent so really impressive performance of the um, uh, lfp battery based on this test so i don't know man i mean i read the comments from you guys many of you guys were um, worried because you ordered the standard range plus and uh, you weren't sure if it's going to be good or not but we have seen now in the past that when it comes to range and efficiency no problem there it weighs a little bit more 100 kilos more the whole car but not really a problem um, and then for acceleration it also it can also match and maybe slightly outperform uh, the the Fremont car and actually uh, when when the battery is lower then it is really outperformed because it has so consistent uh, perform so consistent uh, power output through the whole span down to 10 percent battery so it's almost unreal how fast and snappy it is and what else and then noise is slightly better uh, but then it could also apply to the the Fremont car so basically uh, one thing I haven't tested is cold weather performance because the standard range plus has only one rare motor and it uses that only that rare motor to heat up the battery so it could take a while to heat up the battery because the dual motors they have two motors and they can then heat up the battery with 7 kilowatt whereas the standard range plus can only heat it up with half of that which is around 3.5 kilowatt so that's my only concern how is it going to perform in winter so i think you just have to take the precautions don't leave the battery with uh, 20 percent and you should try to in the winter try to leave it with more than 50 percent because then you will be able to drive a while until you have to charge and that means that um once you charge the car should have time to divert leftover heat to heat up the battery so that you will be charging at fairly good speed uh, and also i think the, the disaster that happened this winter uh, you saw the same thing here uh, parts with that tesla probably held back some of the possible uh, possible charging speed for the lfp battery that in combination that they didn't think about that uh, the battery would be cold in winter so you, people were experiencing some really shitty supercharger speed uh, in winter but uh, it seems like now they have unleashed the power of the charging speed actually before or i don't know uh, versus the middle one you saw the, well, the, the american one and also that they um, they keep the battery at higher temperature in winter so to to minimize or mitigate the problem or the the achilles heel of the lfp battery so I think based on this, it's uh, the LFP from what I've seen, it's good shit. It's just I haven't tested the last thing, but from what I've seen right now and through most countries in Europe or in the world where you don't have freezing cold weather, so uh, maybe Finnish people uh, and the northern Swedish people and maybe Norwegians, they should be a little bit concerned and maybe uh, Canadians. But uh, again, I need to test and verify this before I can give my final verdict. But on the other hand, like I said, Tesla did some update uh, and, and next move tested it and they found it to be better than before. So you guys can probably Google about it and find out more about what next move did and all that. But uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it, guys. LFP, yeah, we got one last thing. Some people ask, hey, this LFP looks freaking awesome. I mean, can, I, can you get that in the long range also in the performance? <laughs> that would be great. But the problem is that the LFP has lower energy density. So they were able to fit it in a standard range plus, which has a smaller battery, but they can simply not fit the LFP battery in, I mean, they cannot fit the same number of kilowatt hour in a long range or a performance. So. Yeah, unfortunately not, <laughs> unless you're willing to get, let's say, because the, the, the long range battery and the performance battery is 80 kilowatt hour, maybe they could squeeze in 70 kilowatt hour in there, but uh, they're probably not gonna do that. So they're probably waiting for the fat cells eventually. Yeah, so anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.